you want to set a time to when we start? I think 6.10 or 6.15 should be good. Um, yeah, I mean, let's give it Max, uh, uh, Max another 10 minutes and start at 15 minutes past. Uh, uh, regardless Six. Of, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll come here. Perfect. We'll start at 6.15. Uh, so they give the academic 15 minutes as we like to <laughs> Um, so we'll we'll um, uh, we'll make a quick post in the uh, in the group as well. So if there's anybody still hanging in the community that uh, uh, that wants to join, then um, then they can do that. Perfect. All right. Uh, um, I've been asked to start the uh, to start the introductions. Uh, um, so officially now, uh, a warm welcome to uh, this webinar, which uh, is presented by uh, uh, by MPay. Uh, we have um, uh, we've got six people joined uh, so far. Others might join um, halfway through. Uh, so for those um, uh, who have already joined, uh, uh, if you have any, um, uh, if you have any, if you have any questions at any time, you can just type them into the um, into the Q and A box uh, at the bottom of the screen. Please do not uh, uh, do not type them to the chat because um, uh, it'll be more difficult to uh, to see. And um, uh, the MPA uh, team will review this at the um, uh, at the uh, uh, end of the official session when when it's time for the question and answers for those of you who um, uh, who don't know me name is uh, my name is Martin I've been uh, working with the UU restaurant community and Tarid for uh, well since the beginning really and um, I have been asked to uh, uh, to kick off um, today's session which has been a long time in um, uh, in the making 
The way it came about, of course, is uh, based on discussions that were had in the UAE restaurant community and people talking about the amount of commissions that they're paying to aggregators uh, and also um, the marketing challenges that they are facing. Uh, MPay then approached us uh, to um, uh, to uh, uh, present their um, their offerings really and, and and their service, and we thought that there is um, uh, there are quite a lot of synergies, and MPay has also kindly uh, uh, agreed to special conditions for members of the UAE restaurant community and Tarit, and you will hear all about those in the um, uh, in the webinar. So. Um, uh, without uh, uh, further ado, I think um, a, I would like to uh, say a warm welcome uh, to um, the representatives of uh, of MPay. Uh, we have Mr. Farhat here and Mr. Tansil, uh, and um, uh, there should uh, do, do you have a uh, do you have a third person joining, uh, uh, or is it only the two of you? It was, uh, it was supposedly to be Mr. Gigi. Uh, he has uh, an emergency probably in, he had to attend a meeting, so wow. he's out there. Uh, we would be representing MP and every authority uh, on this webinar. And oh. uh, once I believe people are here, uh, it would have been nice if there were more, but uh, we would uh, start whenever you say. I think um, I think look, uh, uh, you can make a start, um, and uh, obviously don't forget the session is recorded, and everybody uh, in the uh, in the community will be made uh, or will be given access to uh, uh, to the recording, and will also receive uh, the um, uh, the presentation that you have uh, uh, that you're using. So um, uh, people will be able to uh, to reach out to you. Uh, regardless. No, definitely. All right. Um, okay, so uh, yes, uh, please, uh, um, as we say, take it away and uh, uh, thank you very much. All right, perfect. Thank you, Martin, so much uh, for that lovely introduction and for making things happen. Uh, myself, uh, Tanzil Khan, uh, before introducing myself, I would want to mention uh, Mr. Fahad Kandwai, who is uh, the head merchant acquisition for MP. Uh, not just for the FNB vertical, but as well for all the other verticals on our application. He brings a vast uh, experience legacy uh, with himself as a management head uh, in a previous company, Talabat. Uh, he was the head account manager for the Sharjah team there. And he also brings in a lot of experience from the marketing world with his different uh, uh, you know, ventures that he has been doing over the last few years. Uh, he's there. Uh, he has the complete authority and uh, he would be representing MP in the best capacity. I uh, sit here as a lead acquisition for the Dubai team for MP for the FNB vertical. Uh, I myself have been a part of Talabad for the last three and a half years and before that of the FNB industry with their various companies. Uh, so, yeah, we bring in uh, a lot of uh, experience, the ground experience uh, from the FNB online and the retail side of the businesses. Uh, we would uh, want to thank Taurid as well for their uh, support and the commitment to making this uh, webinar happen with the whole community coming out together. Uh, it's definitely a very big thing to be going out to the restaurants and hearing out that they belong to a community, which is basically this community. And it's a pleasure to be sitting in front of all of you people here. Uh, just to kickstart uh, everything you guys have, I'm sure probably uh, Thorid has shared the agenda of the webinar and uh, what we are looking forward to put across on the table here. Uh, we we bring this agenda in front of you with the vast experiences in real time of the FNB industry and the market. And uh, we are trying to basically address the monster in the room, which is the higher commissions, the vulnerability, the monopolistic approach, uh, all of these things. Just to hit across, I'm going to be sharing my screen with everybody as well, which would uh, have the presentation as well there and uh, while we talk uh, you know 
we can take things forward from slide to slide. Uh, I would do a 10 to, you know, uh, I would take time to go through this presentation. In the end of this, you guys will have the opportunity to raise your questions. Uh, I believe most of the questions or the problems will be answered uh, through the uh, presentation that we have because it's a well-constructed one, uh, keeping in mind everything, uh, especially the problems and the focus is on the solution side. Uh, a few things that I would want to address uh, again with the agenda itself, why the agenda is created. Uh, we have a few points that are the major concerns in the FNB and the retail online industry. The first is the commission structures, the over the top commission structures being offered by different international aggregators in the market. Uh, then we have the monopolistic approach of exclusive contracts and non exclusive contracts and the commissions that follow with them. Uh, the financial and payment structures, uh, they are creating or they have been creating a burden for the brand partners for a long time, where a lot of discrepancies happen uh, with the payments and, you know, the rollout start, it doesn't happen the way it is supposed to. Uh, we would also be addressing the visibility and discount trends that these aggregators have already set out in the market. Uh, logistical foundations, how you don't get visibility for your brands. Then you have the least amount of brand representation, the power of brand representation. We are going to address that as well. And the opportunities this government initiative holds. Uh, for a start, uh, on the main screen itself, you can see uh, MPay as a one wallet, one solution. It's a one-stop application, which is backed up by three different entities. Uh, government of Dubai, Dubai Economic Department, and M Credit itself. Uh, the hierarchy here is straightly under his uh, His Highness, and uh, we have our mentor, we have our chairman, Mr. Ibrahim Ali, who is the Deputy General of the, the DED Department of Dubai. So it all comes down a very uh, legit uh, hierarchy of people and uh, ideas and visions. Uh, to take things further and bring UAE into a cashless economy. Uh, once we do with this, uh, so MPay is basically an initiative from the Dubai government and its entities. Uh, it comes directly under the chairmanship of uh, the deputy director, Mr. Ibrahim Ali. Uh, the actual vision and idea is set by the Royal Highness himself and the visions of his team. Uh, we are looking forward for a vision of 2025 where everything in UAE is uh, done through a seamless transaction, uh, the most secure transactions that we can give. And also it's a one-stop uh, solution for every kind of need uh, for a UAE resident and especially for the brand partners who tag along and brand up with MPay. Uh, we have multiple verticals in our application itself. Uh, food and beverages is one. We have the tap and go systems, which is basically uh, the payouts. Then you have the scanning for the payments. Then you have remittances, international transfers within the state transfers. You have education, uh, which also helps schools to you know get the fees and the payments and everything. So everything dealt on the transaction side of the education is done through this application. You get your utilities, Salik, Mawafik, AADC, no recharges, bills, everything. Uh, then you have the government payments, which is one of the most important things which will be highlighted further in the presentation, and uh, telecom payments. Uh, we enable all kinds of ethos slot, do payments and everything. Uh, we are representing here the food and beverages vertical of this application. Uh, if you guys haven't downloaded it, please download it and see how it works out and how the different options play out in front of you. Uh, keep in mind the fact there's one vertical, which is the government payments. This is going to be discussed further in the presentation as well with the FNB for sure. Uh, what does MPay offer to the industry? Uh, the FNB industry, uh, we offer focus on local businesses. We are a highly focused team of uh, representatives from MPay trying to 
build the SMEs and help the SMEs in these vulnerable times of uh, the economy and especially the trends that the world is going through. Uh, the brand recognition that we bring along uh, once you become a partner with MPay is a completely different uh, ball game which has never been brought out in the FMB industry with any aggregator. Then we talk about the commercials. We offer the best and the lowest commercials in the market, uh, which we will be comparing further in the presentation itself. And the flexibility. So flexible, flexibility comes in where you control your brand, you control your businesses, and you control the money. So none of the aggregators, I believe right now, within my experience, are trying to leverage the flexibility that the partners can have over their businesses and uh, how they can take a hold and decision uh, over their fast-changing trends that they observe. The problem that we are going to address here uh, is basically I'm just going to read it out. Failure of current aggregators in realizing financial impact of current situation in the FNB business, resulting in a ratio of seven to one shutting down of FNB outlets to opening of a restaurant in 2021 compared to two is to one in 2016. So basically, with the backing of the Dubai Economic Department and uh, the data available from the government, we acknowledge and we see that three years back, or let's say 2016, four years back, there was a ratio of every single day two restaurants opening up. Right now, within these changing times, what we have come across is seven restaurants on an average shutting down to everyone opening. I mean, if these are not the worst times where we take the charge and realize what's to be addressed, then I don't know what the other times would be. Uh, in such difficult scenarios and such difficult times for the SMEs and FNB industry, we come out with simple objectives of a vision of for stability across all sectors. We want stability across all sectors, no matter you are a tier one brand, you are a tier two brand, you are a tier three brand. We want to bring in uniformity and stability within your commercials, within the support that we give you out. Everybody needs to have a fair chance in representing themselves. Everybody gets a chance to move up the ladder. Everybody gets a chance to be visible. This is what we are focusing on. Affordable and most competitive commercials to remove any financial burdens. Yes, uh, with uh, different aggregators charging you 25, 35, 40% depending upon your contracts. Then legally bounding you for exclusive and non-exclusive contracts, which is something which does not exist in the UAE laws in the market. Uh, we come across by understanding different variants of or variables of the costing for your brand, for your food, for your delivery. We come out with the most competitive commercials, uh, which is a flat 10%. Uh, I mean, this is something which has never been there in the market. There have been uh, uh, aggregators who have probably offered lower, but with a lot of constraints and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, disclosures that uh, are, are put on them. And, you know, it's basically a burden from them. Uh, we offer the least with this percentage. Uh, the flexibility on logistics is completely something which is completely new in the game. Uh, nobody has ever offered flexibility over every order. This is what we're going to discuss further as well. You get the flexibility over every order. You decide how your food is sent out, how is it received uh, by the end customer, and what are the resources that you would want to use for every order. You do your calculations and you make the best choice. Um, the fourth point is complete access to the user database for full visibility and opportunities for strategic analysis on the brand's end. The back end that you would be getting for uh, once the sign up with MPay happens is basically uh, a very, you know, uh, a benchmark kind of a back end which is being created where the power of the presentation of the brand is completely with the restaurant or the business partner. We do not have any say. We have our standards of the visibility on the front end. How do you want to present it? Yes, 
is somehow standardized by MPay because of the uh, of the actual visibility of the application. But how do you want to do business? How do you want your business or your brand to come out and be visible in the market? Or what kind of offers do you want to give out? What kind of uh, descriptions do you want to give out? What kind of timings? What everything in the back end that you have ever heard about from an aggregator is here and the flexibility has never been seen before. Then the last thing that you have is the VAT solutions, the tax solutions MPA brings in for the restaurant community. Uh, you know how strict the rules are getting for the VATs and the filings and the registrations. We come out with a complete solution for a restaurant from the very beginning of signing up, getting them orders to their operational issues, to their financial and tax issues. We completely have a solution for you from the end to the, uh, you know, from the start to the end. Uh, this is what our objectives are to the problems being faced. Once we come out from this, we have the, uh, the brand recognition. You have, our brand recognition is basically for small and medium-sized businesses. We want to put our focus on, there are more than 10,000 restaurants and brands in Dubai at the moment itself. So many of them SMEs, so many of them have their own standings, have their own structure. Uh, they have built, them up, built themselves up from the scratch uh, in the last few years. And we and there are restaurants and there are partners who are still, you know, coming out in the market uh, with high ambitions. And we do not want to bring any kind of differences, especially on the commercial sector, on the commercial side of the business, or on the support side of the business. Our whole and soul team's agenda, the vision of MPA, is to support the SMEs in every possible way to save businesses from running out of business and bring them a stability and security. This is what we market ourselves as. We market ourselves as the savior in the market. And this is what we are going to stick to in the future as well. Uh, one thing that we are trying to you know, infuse in, in the e-commerce industry is the diverse community-based agendas. So uh, everybody realizes what Dubai and UAE is. It's basically a hub of the world where there are so many different kinds of diverse communities, uh, so many kinds of different languages, so many different kinds of audiences for everybody, for every business. We are trying to cater to every brand uh, and help every brand to cater to these different and diverse communities. Uh, this is definitely something which has never been done before. Uh, we will be addressing, we will be addressing them by the communities, by their agendas, by the trends that they're following right now. Uh, with this, we bring a power to brand. Basically, uh, the brand has the power for everything from complete access to the consumer data, to the marketing that they want to avail for their brands, to the flexibility on deciding how they want to do their deliveries from single order uh, to a bunch of orders. And uh, I mean, you have the complete power to it. You have real-time reflections to be published and uh, you have the complete authority over your menu timings, offers, prices, and availability. Commercials basically are 10% uh, flat. We take a, a logistical fee of 10 dirhams, but we also give you a leverage of charging the customers a delivery fees, which straight away comes down uh, to the business itself, unlike the aggregators taking it uh, in, in the other cases. We do not have a gateway charge. We have a zero person. Basically, it's 10% flat for every order commission. We do not charge any payment gateways. Uh, the registration is put out on a standard 2000 dirhams. But uh, I mean, this is again very competitive in the market. Plus, with the support that we bring out uh, for every MPA, you know, partner is completely a benchmark of what has to be offered into the market right now. Uh, our model is basically revenue generation. Uh, this is the model that we are going to be following. If you are a restaurant, you end up paying commission plus. The delivery fees goes to the aggregator. So basically he owns from two sides of the businesses where we only put a leverage uh, 
into a, a partnership with the business uh, with the businesses we do not have anything to do with the end consumers our only uh, focus is to get the food to them and not any money out of them basically uh, in terms of this uh, we only charge your flat commission uh, and that's about it this is how our model works uh, this will definitely be shared with you on the presentations as well uh, this is a calculation of how things are done uh, if you compare the orange on the left side is an x aggregator and on the right side we are mpay uh, if you see the calculations basically for an order which was 50 dirhams uh, you as a business partner only end up receiving 35 from an aggregator mm -hmm. and yes yeah i think we can share the presentation later with the uh, participant so that they yeah. can go through this example but I think yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm just with the gist of how much exactly it actually benefits. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So not taking much time. Basically, the left side is an X aggregator for a 50 dirham order. You end up earning 35 dirhams. Where on the right hand side you have M pay for the same order. You end up earning 41.3 dirhams. So basically, from it's it's more than a 10% uh, margin. Uh, more than a 10% margin that you would be availing with the use of MPay and with the same services or better. Uh, this is for a higher, uh, you know, basket size. And again, you end up making a margin of 85% with MPay services and which is almost 15% less with any other aggregator which are in the top market right now. Uh, Flexibility again comes down to the logistical models. On every order, you have a leverage of uh, deciding uh, whether you want it to be delivered by yourself or you want it to be delivered by MP. Um, the areas are decided by you. The uh, what you call the the evaluations of any cancellation orders or any messes up uh, mess ups at our end are completely taken on by MP. Uh, in terms of the back end, the most flexible back end you would ever see. Uh, plus, you get the power to judge and calculate every order and how you want it to be delivered to your audience. Uh, we bring you visibility on app, we bring you a website visibility, we bring you banners and offers which are unpaid. Uh, we do a complete management for you, menu management. Uh, if you want menu engineering to be done, we do that too. We have MPay bond campaigns, monthly campaigns. Uh, we have government branding. So basically, we do not force brands to put out 50% discounts that they take, uh, and they take it on themselves. We actually uh, try and push people to have their own calculations, and you, they decide themselves how much uh, discounts are good for them. And then MPay comes into the picture with its own offers and its own bearing of the discounts. Uh, this is our package where uh, basically we do everything of listing your brand uh, to the visibility side of it. And uh, uh, I mean, it's all there. Uh, the portal that you have the back end basically is a very sophisticated one in terms of uh, what all our options do you get there. Uh, even if you run 10 virtual brands, you wouldn't want to have 10 different devices. You get the same backend, you get the same access, and you can have total control over it. Uh, it gives you all multiple different kinds of reports uh, at the touch, uh, you know, at the click of a button. There are three different kinds of accesses, uh, manager, staff, and, uh, you know, the owners. And we do not uh, promote any usage of devices. You can use any device with uh, running internet connection. We also help you build a website for your recognition in the UOE market. Uh, we help you with that. Uh, we have a team of web developers who come in the picture and help you out with the uh, with the with the setup of this website, uh, and it's completely cost free. Uh, uh, in the end, uh, I mean, uh, you get to be a part which is a very underlined fact, which is, uh, you know, supposed to be put uh, stressed upon again and again. It is a government initiative. Uh, there is no point of this, you know, going out of the window. Uh, it's backed up by the different entities of the government, and it also brings in a one-stop solution for everybody. These are our strategic partners at the moment. Uh, you guys will probably see it. And uh, I mean, this was it from the presentation side. If you uh, 
I'm sure you guys will have this presentation with you. If you guys have any questions, uh, Luda will be sharing our emails as well with you. So you can address those emails to us directly. And uh, uh, we can take up the question answer session from here. Yeah, we will, we will just, just before, just before we go in for the question answer session, uh, I just wanted to clear a few points uh, before we go ahead. So uh, I'm just going to quickly summarize what Anzil has said um, in a tidbit, uh, just for a better understanding in lay, layman terms, right? See, MPE, what you need to understand is a contactless. So uh, because we're going with the digital economy in regards and in the vision with uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed himself, uh, it's a contactless payment gateway that's supposed uh, to support tap to go with so um, having a term called instant credit. Now, instant credit is something that we give all MPA users starting in uh, from the next month itself. So uh, in order to log on to MPA, how can you log on? With the other aggregators, we have various number of problems. I'm going to go through those problems um, quickly. And uh, you'd know how uh, MPA is completely different and how it is bringing in a stabilized sense of uh, bringing down the, uh, not only the commission rates that have been uh, used and abused by monopolistic uh, uh, online uh, delivery aggregators in the region, but also uh, support the uh, SMEs, in this case, the FNB uh, restaurants, right? So first and foremost, in order to log in as a customer on MPay, you need to have an Emirates ID. Because of the biometrics uh, system of the national ID that prevails in the UAE, we need to understand that this itself creates a stable uh, marketplace. So MPay is a marketplace that brings in all utilities together, be it government fees from education fees, utilities, uh, food and beverage, um, money transactions, uh, including your transportation like Noel, Salik, uh, and all of that. So it's an ecosystem. So you need to understand it's not only a food aggregator platform wherein we have uh, traffic that would be generated. Say for example, people using Noel and Salik. There's so many, everyone just goes ahead and you know, uh, they recharge. So we have traffic coming in from there and going in to FNB as well. So this entire ecosystem is what we are looking for, first of all. What is the problem that the restaurants actually face today? Let's just talk about the problems. The restaurant are facing tremendous amount of, I mean, because of the monopolistic market that exists. And this, to be honest, it's just because the restaurants have accepted it and they did not realize when did their market share, their share of sales or revenue change into Say, for example, if you go to an online aggregator, be it any company, Talabat, Zomato, Delivery, whatever it is, or what happens? You go with the sense of you know, having an extra revenue income of approximately 20%, right? And that's fine, even if you're paying a high commission on it. But what are you actually paying? What are you actually paying? You're actually paying the commission, which is in regards to marketplace is between uh, 12 to 15 percent, and marketplace does not exist. Today, we are the only company giving you marketplace, which is non-delivery. All right. So, if you talk about delivery, you're paying 25 to 35 percent straight on commission. All right. Sometimes up to 40 percent, and with a term called key partner, which actually means exclusivity. Exclusivity over here means that you cannot deal with other aggregators. This itself, in its term, is wrong. That's why, they, because of the laws, they cannot use exclusivity. They use key partner. All right. Now, when we're talking about 25 to 40% only on commission, so we take an average of 30. So we take commission being paid out from the restaurant is 30%, plus the payment gateway fee, which is 2%. Plus there is the customer delivery fee, which is taken by the aggregator and not by you because the aggregator is delivering it. That is approximately around 10 dirhams, okay, on an average, considering all the uh, food aggregators. So on an on a average check, of 100 dirhams, for example, what we need to look at is 30%, which is 30 dirhams straight goes off to the commission. 
two dirhams as the payment gateway. That's 32 dirhams. Plus another, on top of that, another 10 dirhams, which is taken from the customer and still taken away by the online aggregator, which is another 10 dirhams, right? So how much is the restaurant actually paying? And let me not get started with the campaigns wherein the restaurants today on each of these aggregator platforms do not generate enough sales unless and until they're doing their campaigns. And when I talk about campaigns, I'm talking about 50%. So you're looking at 50% in order to have a good revenue from within the aggregator platform. So 50% a discount, approximately at least half a month or three weeks of the month. So 50% plus 30%, plus 2%, plus the customer discount. You're going approximately up to 88, 89% in terms of what you're paying out to the aggregator. Uh, All right. Fahad, sorry to cut you. Somebody yeah. has a similar question uh, here. Yeah, I'll come back to the questions very quickly after this. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll quickly come back to the questions. All right. So, and after having all of this said, so you're paying like 88 to 89%, keep that aside. After that, you still go ahead and you pay marketing fees in terms of premium areas and premium locations that you buy in order for your restaurant to have a higher visibility. That, is, that comes approximately on an average, if I could say, because I have worked in uh, aggregators such as those, I would say around 5,000 to 7,000 dirhams a month for generic SME standalone restaurant. I'm not talking about the higher brand, uh, brands, wherein you have uh, a lot number of branches. There, therein, uh, I mean, the average check for a marketing, uh, uh, visibility driver of uh, premium positions or uh, et cetera could go up to 60,000. If, if, if you're talking about a, a restaurant that has a higher uh, number of branches, but I'm talking about a, just a standalone wherein you're paying 5,000 7, uh, to 7,000 dirhams on an average. All right. Having said all of this, what is the customer base? The restaurants have forgotten that if they have had a certain stance in the country wherein they have a market share of their own. So what you essentially are doing is you go on an aggregator platform, you go with their market, you go with your market share plus an additional market share that is driven by them. However, their market share is already shared within the ecosystem of the aggregators itself. Why is that? Because it's a promotion driven market. When you talk about a promotion driven market, what happens is where the promotion is there, where that's where exactly the audiences and the revenue goes. All right, having understood all of this, if I actually calculate above the 89% on an average throughout the year, what you pay to an aggregator, you go ahead and pay 5,000 to 7,000 more every month and then you also have an irregularity of the audiences being duplicated. So maybe if you were not on the aggregator platform, that person would have come directly to you. But now because you are on the aggregator and the aggregator is doing a lot many, uh, a lot many uh, campaigns on marketing itself, this, your customer, which was actually yours and you would not pay commission for, goes to that aggregator. And when it goes to that aggregator, you pay commission for the same customer. Okay, so this is where uh, approximately 40 to 50% of your customers do pay. Having said this, why is there need of a balance? Need of a balance right now is only because you bought in the aggregator, like I previously said, for an extra income of 20%, right? When did that 20% turn into 70%. Remember, your, say for example, your business revenue is 100%. 20% is taken by the aggregator. Wherein you're paying 88% of that 20% as, I mean, the revenue is going up. So you're just left with about 12% of profit from the 20%, but it doesn't matter because it's 20%. But when does that 20% become 70%? The moment it becomes 70%, that's when you realize that you're losing. And this trend mixed with the pandemic that just happened, wherein dine-in and takeaway was not that usual, is where the restaurants lost. And this is 
this is the crux. This is the crux of the issue. What we are trying to do is we are trying to resolve this issue. We are trying to build up the economy, economy, right? How are we doing that? To say that we are another aggregator is not right. Why? Because we are a lifestyle a platform. We FNB has just been added to MPay to make sure the market is stabilized in terms of commissions, in terms of orders and stability. Okay, I mentioned three things, commissions, orders and stability. Let's go to commissions first. Commissions, on an average, a 10% commission on a marketplace is more than enough to suffice an aggregator company. Anything above that is pure profit, is used and to an extent abuse when it goes above 25, 30, 40%, all right? I'm talking about delivery specifically, wherein you're paying directly 30% to an aggregator. On top of that, he's also taking the delivery fee that the customer is paying. On the other hand, you have MPay that is charging you 10% straight for delivery and the delivery fee directly goes to the delivery company. So we are not taking it, we're giving it directly. So you're nullified there. You're directly nullified. You're not getting the delivery free. You're not getting the delivery fee either uh, uh, with MPay nor with that. But what are you saving on? You're saving on 20% commission. That's where you save. First, the commissions. In terms of orders, definitely because they have uh, the aggregators have been there for a long time and they have been uh, having extensive marketing campaigns which have given them a higher market share. And this I agree to 110%. I'm not going to sit over here and lie about it. I would go ahead and tell you that, no, we do not have a higher market share. We don't. At this point of time, no, we don't. We have just started about a year back and we have had a lot many problems. But the question coming in from Naveed. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer that, Tanzeel. Just let me finish this one and then I'll answer that, right? I'll go exactly uh, to the answer of what Mr. Naveed has said. Uh, having that said, I'm, I'm just trying to complete, uh, just let me complete this piece. So uh, I was talking about uh, wherein we have uh, the, uh, wait, what was, it? okay, yeah. So the aggregator platforms at the same point of time are charging a higher commission, right? So you're saving on 20% commissions. Now I'm talking about orders. I told you about the market share. The restaurant brings a market share with it, whether you like it or not. Take any restaurant. Take Caesars, for example. Caesars is one of the uh, brands that exists and almost all of us know it over here in Dubai, right? And when you talk about Caesars itself, what are you saying? Caesars does not have a market share? Definitely Caesars has a market share. So the moment it goes on an aggregator platform, it's ta it takes its market share and goes over there. It's and the aggregator platform would never let you see this, that to let you leverage that market share over them. What we are telling you is very clearly and bluntly, we don't have a market share and we're not going to lie about it. But what we are giving you is a stability, a, a stable income that is secure. How is it secure and how is it stable? No there is no audience that can be duplicated, which means you cannot just create an account with an email or a number. You have got four SIM cards, you create four accounts. No. One Emirates ID, one login, one person. And Emirates ID is only given to a resident of Dubai. Now, because it's a resident of Dubai, you know the turnaround period is far longer than any tourist or, or somebody who's coming for a shorter period. So anyone with an Emirates ID definitely has a longer stay. In this regard, you would if, if you are a part of MP, we are growing. We are definitely growing and we have huge, huge campaigns coming up and a lot of, and by the way, we have budget and we will invest it. But as, a, as an aggregator within the market itself, today MP, yes, towards the FNB, when we, took, when we take the FNB vertical, we are an aggregator itself. You need to understand that a market share is not only driven by doing extensive marketing. We need to give something back to the audience that's coming on board, right? 
Now, what we are telling you that the restaurant is bringing in its market share. We accept that and we acknowledge it. Having that said, we also have a lot of market share that is driven from the ecosystem of the marketplace that MP is. And what is this ecosystem? It is a stable, secure ecosystem of residents that have a national ID. Wherein today you would get, say for example, we start off with 50 orders a month. All right, we start off with 50 orders a month. Next month, I wouldn't guarantee you 100 orders. No, I would guarantee you 55 orders. Or I'd say 60 orders. There would be a growth, but there would be a steady growth and there would not be a fall. This is what we are giving, stability and security. In regards to marketing and campaigns, on, uh, in order to get gain a higher market share from MPA's side, what we are doing over here is the restaurants, the ones that are coming on board, we have approximately signed a pro uh, Tanzil, is that 1,088, 1,088 uh, uh, contracts is yes. what we have as of now? Yes. And this, this was literally done in the last four to five months, all right? So when we're looking at 1,088 restaurants, obviously we, we, we need to get to a larger area, but for these 1,088 restaurants, what are we doing? What are we giving you? We're giving you 10% commission. No payment gateway fee because we are a payment gateway in ourselves right? We are giving you campaigns, straight off campaigns, wherein you were paying 50% over there. You are, you are covering the cost. We are telling you that MP campaigns, each month we have a campaign. Recently, one of our most successful campaigns was the 180 campaign. You have 180 in Talabat and Zomato, but what is that 180? You buy a product, the second product, you get it for 180. It's not like that, how it works over here. We have a budget from the UAE Central Bank itself. So when I say we have a budget, we have a budget to energize you, to support you, wherein the customer pays one dirham, MP adds 25 dirham, uh, 24 dirhams, the customer pays one dirham, MP adds 24 dirhams, and the restaurant gets 25 dirhams on a value meal that it makes of 25 dirhams. MP supports you with the entire cost of those 24 dirhams. And this is an order wherein a customer can keep ordering every day, a order every day, all right? Having that said, uh, so I talked about uh, commissions, I talked about orders. Why MP? Why not MP? If the restaurants themselves do not understand that there is a need for change or there is, we are not asking you to sign exclusivity. No, we do not want exclusivity. We we want you to come. I mean, we want to enter a stage of competition. The reason why we want to enter a stage of competition is only and only because we need to put prices in checks. Wherein a restaurant has not signed an exclusive contract with an aggregator, and because these because the aggregator has a high amount of revenue share in that restaurant, the restaurant cannot come out of the contract. So what we, what we are doing over here is straight up going and saying, please come on board with MP. We are not charging anything apart from the 10% for an order we are giving you. You go on any other aggregator, you have a registration fee. And trust me, I know this because I've worked there. So you have a registration fee up to 1,500 to 2,000. And in some cases, 3,000 if you take delivery, for example. If you have right. a restaurant in JLD or JBR, probably then they think you have money and you end up paying 3,000. Yeah, yeah, 3,000. <laughs> and, and trust me, it works like that. All right. Yeah. So you're paying a registration fee of 1,000 to 1,500 to 3,000. Plus, you're paying for the tablet, right? The tablet would cost you another 700 dirhams. Plus, there is a renewal, which is all, yes, we have a renewal fee. But the renewals with the aggregators is way higher at 2,700, starting at 2,700 and all the way above to 3,500, all right? In certain cases, when you argue with the aggregator, as a restaurant, you are able to get a zero registration, but the renewal would never change because 
that is something considered as a system maintenance fee maintenance fee that none of the aggregators are going to disclose to you wherein we clearly go ahead and say that we take some time in order no we we do have some certain benefits or no we we do have some we do have certain expenses when it comes to running the platform itself right so where where would that money come from when we are giving off the campaigns when we are giving free registration like zero registration 2000 registration is something that we give out right but for this platform where in taurid has come and taurid i i would like to thank taurid for doing this where in taurid comes and we are giving you instead of 2000 we have reduced it to zero registration so you're paying zero instead of 1000 to 3000 dirhams right on registration on renewals you're paying 2000 and this is not mandatory those restaurants who have already been a part with the uh, with the uh, existing aggregators would know this that they are charged uh, renewal fees without them being informed it's debited and then you cannot do anything about it over here you have to pay it in order to renew so if you do not wish to go ahead you do not pay so in the starting what are you signing you're signing a 10% contract without a payment gateway fee without any charges whatsoever and in regards to the tablet we just have a link that could be opened anywhere it's a smart link it's a link that you could use on your mobile tablet laptop anywhere so we save the cost of the tablet itself so what are you paying for you would only pay for any order that comes to you at 10% straight there is nothing else that we are charging so wherein you want to sign a contract wherein you're not paying anything in the upfront you're just paying for the orders you you receive and just 10% and if you're not happy with it you are asked you're given the option of not continuing and if you wish to continue if you see that there is a certain benefit in it then you go ahead and pay 2000 dirhams for the next year not this year and 2000 by the way is the lowest renewal fee in the entire market having that said i hope most of you have had a clarity on what mp is and what we are trying to do like tanzil rightly said we have other services that you know complement mp as an ecosystem which is the mvat service we know vat um declaration filing and vat uh, return filing has become so very uh, traumatic to most of the restaurants over here when most of them don't even know how does it work so we give you an all like all in all solution for wat wherein it's a software you just need to uh, enter your uh, details and you would get re uh, reoccurring uh, messages from the system itself this software itself again is at 2000 dirhams a year which is literally around 160 dirhams a month the only close competition that comes to this is at the salat at 500 dirhams a month all right so in regards to the wat software we are at the best rate and we also give you a, a personalized account manager that is that's going to pick up your calls the last point and then i'll open the floor for questions would be the back end now when you are an aggregator the reason why we call the restaurant a partner is because we treat it as a partner we do not call a restaurant a merchant or we do not call it something else we call the restaurant a partner because it is a partner wherein we as aggregators would not be able to get money if the restaurant doesn't earn money right having that said the back end is very crucial i believe in having an open back restaurant should be free to put and whatever delivery charge whatever delivery time or whatever minimum order they want throughout a certain area that they are limited to now when i'm talking about delivery charges when i'm talking about minimum order note mp mp's backend is the only backend that gives you an option of selecting whether you would want to go with an mp driver or your own driver say for example most of the aggregators they when you sign a hybrid contract so see a marketplace the your drivers would deliver to the father locations 
but the close seven kilometer radius would be delivered by them, which means if there's an order that's coming in your building, wherein a person can just pick it up and go up, your, your restaurant uh, uh, waiter or, or, or just a, a clerk can pick it up and just go upstairs, I think 35 to up to 80% just to deliver food from your restaurant to the building upstairs, wherein we are giving you an option for each and every order to select whether you want to deliver it or we deliver it. If you deliver it, it's still the same because we're charging just 10%. On delivery, the customer pays 10 dirham and that 10 dirham is taken by the delivery company. So that's nullified. So 10% is all that we charge, as simple as this. <laughs> Having said that, I hope uh, the entire, um, you know, the entire agenda is clear, but I think we have four questions. Uh, Mr. Naved with the first one um, asking, not being funny, but this is all nice to hear. However, how will you drive volume? I guess uh, over here, volume means market share or the number of orders that you're receiving as a restaurant. Without volume and transactions, this means nothing to us. I understand that. The main aggregators at least drive volume. I understand this, Mr. Naveed, but what we are doing over here, like I said, is trying to create a stable and a secure, uh, a, a stable and a secure uh, place for restaurants, right? I do understand that all, all the restaurants need volume, but volume at what cost? Volume at cost of, okay, if not 88%, 60%. 50%, even if you remove that 40% of your business? Uh, I, uh, sorry, sorry, Mr. Fahad. I believe Mr. Naveed uh, has his mic on if he wants to have a conversation, probably. Go ahead, yeah, Mr. Naveed. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, uh, first and foremost, I uh, appreciate the time that you made uh, to come on and to talk about this uh, this offer and, you know, the benefits. And, and this, this is all good and, you know, it's all great to hear. Yeah. But look, everything that you're saying is music to a restaurant operator's ears, no doubt. Okay, I think you're you're from the industry, you've been in the industry a while, you know the pros and cons of the existing aggregators. The majority of what you said and what I understand about the offer or what you're offering makes sense and is music to our ears. However, everything that you have said, the customer doesn't care. Um, why would a customer choose MPay, V's, a very crowded market. Ultimately, the customer is looking for a platform which is user-friendly, um, has great uh, um, execution as far as uh, delivery, and you're th therefore competing in a very busy, crowded segment where you have companies which you know who they are spending millions on customer acquisition um, and tech to make the platforms as user-friendly as possible. How are you going to compete to that? Why would a customer change their mindset from using one of the big top three, essentially, current top three, to using MPay? And that's the million dollar question. It's not about being com you know, commercially minded as far as the restaurant operator is concerned. I'm sure every restaurant operator on this who's listening, who's logged on today, this is all great. And I'm, I'm assuming that most are saying the same thing that I'm saying, is this is all great to hear. Commercially makes sense. Yes, secure. Yes, you understand what we, you know, you're, you're, you understand the pulse of the business, but what's going to make you different to the customer? The same reason, and I, I, I use this example in my question, we've had the likes of Smiles, we've had the likes of, you know, Noon, you know, hit the platform to, you know, recently, Perfect. offering all, you know, you know, music, you know, and to, to some people they get excited, oh, Noon is coming, they're going to disrupt the market, you know, and all this, no disrespect means nothing to me you know everyone talk is cheap right ultimately today yes the likes of noon and mpay go food it's all great um as far as com being commercially attractive to us and you know we can make some margin for change however how are you going to change the mindset of the customer perfect i i, I really respect you uh, for uh, for clearing up the question as well uh, in regards to uh, the mindset of the customer itself, in regards uh, wherein the customer, what, what would attract, what is 
MPs USP uh, unique selling point in regards to how attractive it seems to the customer. MP, like I said, is not only an FNB uh, online aggregator, right? Uh, it is a lifestyle ecosystem. It's a marketplace wherein we have all sorts of commodities and services that the customer can pay for. I had, having that said, no, having that So Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I know what you're going to say. Ultimately, we've got many of these super apps, right? Um, let's, you know, let's, yes, you, you, I'll, I'll mention one, Kareem, who came and- No, you know, we are nothing like Kareem. I'm so sorry. No, I know what, what I'm trying, well, no, I'm, in all honesty, most customers today, no disrespect, don't want a crowded app. They want, a go, they want a go to app. Where they can... I have the answer right at, at the please. tip of my tongue, if you'd let okay. me, please. Perfect. Uh, I understand where you're coming from. What you need to understand is MP offers payment solutions, direct payment solutions, which is instant credit. Instant credit is a service. We are not only an aggregator system. We are a financial house in itself, right? We are providing instant credit to the customers. What is instant credit? Instant credit is the moment you log on with your Emirates ID, you have, because our sister concern is the Etihad Credit Bureau under M Credit. That's our sister concern. And as you know, the Etihad Credit Bureau is responsible for ratings. Now, MP itself, is an instant credit, contactless, tap and go lifestyle ecosystem for the customers, wherein the customer does not have to go to the bank. He just needs to upload his Emirates ID on the application, register for it, wait for it to get accepted. Once it's accepted, he would automatically get an instant credit of X amount, which he can use on the application. Where would he go from there? The first question. The second question, because we are a payment gateway, in regards to the aggregators, they are being charged approximately, I think, uh, Tanzil, correct me if I'm wrong, 2% to 2.25% or 2.5% per yeah, transaction? Varies. Yeah, it varies from aggregator to aggregator. Yeah, all right. So, so let's take 2%, at the lowest, 2%, right? 2% the to aggregators who? itself, the aggregators to itself who? would have a checkout with us, wherein the customer, if he's a part of MP, if he can pay through MP, would get a direct cash back of 20% like any other bank, but the aggregator itself will promote us only because, only because mm -hmm. we are giving them a 0.5, the, a 0.5%. You're not, uh, Fahad, you're not answering the question. I'm talking from a customer's perspective. Again. Uh, yeah, exactly. So from a customer's perspective, I'm giving him instant credit. I'm giving him credit about that. his hands. That doesn't straight work. Up. It doesn't work. Ultimately, that's not going to be your, your, that can't be your USP, just that you give instant credit. I understand where you're coming it from. Is, it, is, it, is, it, is one of the, it is one of the points. I'm giving instant credit. I'm giving loyalty programs. I'm giving campaigns that are also supported for the restaurants. I'm giving in campaigns where he's giving one dirham it, itself. It's it's not a comic campaign wherein you pay for one product and then you add one dirham. It's direct no, no, campaigns. But, but these, this is all great. Campaigns. But this is all great. Ultimately, the customer psyche is such human beings as hu our human nature is that we don't like change. Okay, so when we use is like uh, to a certain app. Okay, and certain demographics like certain apps. Okay, without going into specifics. Okay, mm -hmm. it's. I'm baffled by this as well. I keep challenging myself and questioning myself on this point as well. How, right. but ultimately one has to accept that if you're going to get a customer to move from argument say Deliveroo to MPay, you need how cash. the hell are you, how the hell are you going to do it? Because what 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 Deliveroo offers today, forget what it offers the, to the merch to the merchant. For us it's suicide, right? With Deliveroo. However, to yes. the customer it's a great user experience. They're the, by far the best as far as execution with logistics. So what are you going to offer? And most, most delivery customers don't care about discounts. They, they're, not very prone, they're not prone to a discount environment or loyalty environment. They just want something which is easy to use, 
they have uh, access to the uh, to the to the merchant or to the restaurant, and it's efficient, fast service. Okay, so there are three points that were raised. Okay, one is the brand image itself. The second is the UI and UX, which is the user interface, okay. wherein it's easier for the customer to go ahead because they they are more comfortable. The second is, uh, sorry, the the third is the marketing not in terms of campaigns, in terms of brand awareness, right? And the fourth is the financial backup of these companies. That makes them so great. I mean, just to, just to add and not to cut uh, Mr. Naveed and Mr. Fahad, both of you guys, I mean, if I have been in the industry and I have some experience, I'm sure three years back, people weren't very comfortable by for signing Talabat uh, as an Yeah, I'm coming to that point, Tanzil, I'm, I'm coming. In specific areas. I mean, I'm if you had to the point, if I'm you had to look the point. back in Bardubai or international city, let's let's just say for an example, people never wanted to sign up uh, with anything except uh, I would come back to that, uh, brand. So yeah, I mean, it's a growing thing, and just to back up what everything Mr. Fahad is saying here, basically how we are going to get the customer is basically we are trying, and we will push the narrative forward of it is a government-backed application. That's not the only uh, thing, Tanzil. Can I please complete? Yeah, sure. All right, perfect. So in, in terms of these uh, four uh, points that I just uh, uh, told you, brand, MP is a brand that is credible and is backed up by the government. So there's no say in that. Uh, in, in order to push it front, we have the financial banking backing of the largest bank, which is the UA Central Bank, and it's the government's, right? So in terms of budgets, we don't have problems. We're just waiting for the right time wherein we have sufficient coverage of uh, restaurants. Uh, say, for example, if I go in JLT, I need to have minimum 50 to 60 restaurants over there. We are a startup. Yes, I agree to that, 110%. But I cannot go ahead and use up all my budget unless and until I have a certain amount of... Uh, so I might have a demand, but I might not have a supply for it. So I need to make sure that we sign up as many as brands as possible, right? So having answered the first question in, in regards to the brand, it is credible because it's backed up by the Dubai government. And it's, it's, it's in the vision of His Highness himself. Having said that, the second thing, UI and UX. We have suffered in the last year in terms of the interface uh, when it comes to the front end. I agree to that. We have had Entire teams changed, entire teams, when I say entire teams moved, entire teams changed, and we are working on sprints on a week-to-week -week basis. If, I don't know if you're using MP, but in, in, in regards to location, in regards to ordering, in regards to failed orders, canceled orders, in regards to customer satisfaction levels, in regards to um, uh, the point of contact, the, 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 uh, the point of taken to contact the customer in terms if his order was canceled, has we have achieved numbers which were not possible in a very short amount of time. So these are problems that we have 100%, but we are working day and night to solve this. Having answered the UI and UX uh, issue, going ahead to marketing. Like I said, marketing is a good problem to have for us. The reason why it's a good problem to have for us is because we have the financial bank. That's not a problem. The problem is we need to have sufficient number of vendors in order to do that. Because I, it, it would be a futile marketing exercise if we do not have the vendors on board. And this is what I'm trying to tell the vendors. In order to solve the problem of a monopolistic market wherein you're charged extreme amounts of money and the customer is definitely driven to them because of the interface and the, the adaptability and the habit of using that application. It will change. It will take time. It will be slow, but it will be stable and it will be secure is what I'm guaranteeing. I'm not going to guarantee you something that is magic in the end. No, I'm asking I, you to. I understand, but you know, you have to understand from the, from the restaurant's perspective. Again, I'm not saying I'm speaking on behalf of all restaurants, but I will say the majority. Right. Today is about survival. Today is about making ends meet. The, the, the primary reason why it's a love-hate relationship with the existing aggregators is because we actually depend on them. Yes, there's no margin, but it's cash flow. Today, cash is king. 
I it's understand that, time. but adding adding so an aggregator. No, we don't have like, time. So my my push my challenge to you is there isn't time, and most restaurant operators will be frustrated with that sort of kind of response by give us time because we would say you know no, what no, we are not we are not asking you to give us time. We're not asking you to give us time. What what I'm asking straight up is you are already stuck in a certain situation, right? Where you don't have an option because that 20%, like I was talking, when it turned to an 80%, no one understood that. What I'm, I'm literally saying over here is adding MP as another aggregator is not going to worsen things. It's going to better things. No, no, look, look ultimately, it, uh, I think for... You know, I can speak on my behalf my, my, for myself that it's incremental business, right? Ultimately, if I even get one transaction a day or one transaction a week, is incremental business. However, it's becoming a very crowded dashboard, so or, or you know a very crowded front desk with tablets and dashboards. Hundred percent. You know, it's again prioritizing you know what works for the business. We, we have software for that. No, no, we I understand that. No, you, you, you have you're miss, software you, for that. I'm not, you're missing the gist of what I'm saying. No, no, I'm not missing the gist. I'm, I understand that you do not have enough time or tolerance in order to, you know, go ahead and go through the same cycle that you have been taken through with the other aggregators and end up in a situation where you don't want to be. Is, is that right? Is that, is that because, look, ultimately, okay. Ultimately, the, the current players in the market, the big, the big guys. I mean, basically, there's the three main players, right? Uh, yeah, and they the, started from zero. Uh, yeah, look, I, mean, I, I, I can talk about Talibat. A few years ago, the, the, the UI, 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 UX experience with Talibat was the worst in the market. Right? I was, I was there. I was there. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. there in Talibat since but, uh, but approximately four US, years. The USP with Talibat was they had an Arabic customer following, so that was yes. the only. But the user experience was the worst I've ever seen. Correct. Um, you know, until they were bought by obviously our, our, our friends today. So, but my 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 the thing here is this that ultimately even after but, they were bought by the friends today. Yeah, yeah, understood, understood. Ult but then what everyone is pivoted to, as far as the aggregators, even Deliveroo for that matter, is discounting. You know, and now we've gone to a culture of discounting where if you go next door to Qatar, for example, there's no discounting. Uh, the culture is not there as far as discounting and other GCC countries. I'll tell you how they achieved that. Tell me. They had cash to burn. Well, yeah, that's a, obviously you, you do need cash to burn. So no, that was that's that's the that's the that's the that's the bottom no, line of it. No, no, agreed, Un understood. But the point is this: that by the time you catch up. Again, I'm not, I'm being critical here because I'm challenging and I'm you know I'm I'm I know I'm, I know I understand I'm, that I'm, and I love it I love it I'm I'm championing what you want you know your 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 mindset and what you want to achieve so but please don't take this that I'm being negative no no hundred percent I'm, I'm taking um, it as a as a feedback and you know yeah. like feedback is the best thing I could ever get right now absolutely so what what I'm trying to say is this by the time you catch up because the tech space as you know without insulting your intelligence is moving on a daily basis hence yes. why huge Amounts of money are being burnt. You know, delivery today. You know, well, most aggregators today are not making money. They're all, you know, they're all losing money. But it's because they keep investing in tech. They keep investing in like UI, UX, UX yes. experience, um, and obviously customer acquisition and so forth. By the time you catch up with them, they've already advanced to the next. We have stage. already caught up, Mr. Navid. Have you heard about MCash? No. MCash is the cryptocurrency of Dubai today. It's the only legal tender in regards to crypto, which would be legally accepted through only one application, MPay. Okay. So How's there that are good? many things uh, happening all together. Yeah, okay. And just, just, just to probably support, sorry, I mean, just to probably support the question which Mr. Naveed had at the, at the very beginning and which was very, uh, you know, uh, hearable was, how is MP going to be working on the customer acquisition? Again, the question comes back. There's an restaurant X. He's getting 100 orders from Talabat, 100 from Zomato, and 100 from Deliveroo. Uh, on the same day, how is MP going to match up and you know probably get his time from those busy periods and you know try and avail two orders or one order in a day? So, uh, I mean, uh, just to acquire that, I mean, I can give Actually, you a picture. Sorry. I, I, I wouldn't even call it customer acquisition because customer acquisition is easy. You just burn money, right? I mean, that's easy. Yeah. yeah. It's, so, it's, it's, it's ultimately customer retention. How do you retain? Exactly. Them? So exactly. Our, customer, our customer retention is the 
the very first thing that backs it up is mpay is only a emirates id login application and so it's the, the, only, the retention it's the only currency mcash is the only cryptocurrency as a legal tender so way when we're talking about the future or the i mean the next 5 years or okay or whatever we were talking about that is the future and aggregators would need to come up with that but we, they would need to be a part of mpay customers need to be a part of mpay in order to get that so having we, all of this said i think we do have a good chance but like you said it's not going to be easy we need to buckle up we need your support most i mean most importantly we need the restaurant support and trust foremost the trust because right now we are not doing this for ourselves we would not add fnb as you know a part of the mp ecosystem because there were other services like medical like uh, you know uh, the uh, um the emirates id service itself uh, there were so many other services that we could bring in but the reason why we bought this is because of the issue where in restaurants are closing on a day to day basis and if we're talking about seven three or four out of the seven are closing only because of high commission rates mr navel i'll tell you one thing there was a restaurant and not far back about a year back not even a year i think about 8 months back when his renewal came he had to pay more than what he generated from the aggregator how did that happen that happened because he was running 50% discounts he was signed at 35% exclusive paying 2% of a um of a payment gateway fee uh, uh the the customer was uh, being charged the delivery fee taken by the aggregator he was burning cash he was burning cash every month in order to just maintain his orders so today he would burn 10000 next month the premium position rates would go up to 12000 he'd burn 12000 for the same amount of customers or even less and then he would keep going and at the end what's going to happen is at the end what's going to happen is he's going to lose out i think mr navid has raised his hand again uh, i guess oh, it's, it's 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 already there uh, yeah just so mr navid i hope i answered your question can i go, can i please go ahead with the next question if you don't mind absolutely thank you appreciate it no, and mr navid the... please uh, feel free to get in touch with me at any point of time you can find me on linkedin or feel uh, or feel free to get in touch with one of uh, the you know the um, uh, uh, pocs in taurid or tanzil over here uh, i would love to sit with you and discuss more on this i mean this was a good conversation to have i mean right, it opens you. up our uh, ideas and we could definitely come up with something that are, like i want to see from the restaurants perspective you know what i mean so if you have some ideas wherein you think that this could actually benefit we would love to do it we'd love to do it we are all about smes that's all just, we are about. Just, just to just to paint just to paint a last picture while we answer his question is imagine a day where people are getting down at the dubai airport and the biggest flex you see is you want to be cashless you you want to be you want to be cashless in dubai you use mpay which is going to be promoted by the government backed up by the government entities it's it's going to take time but yes definitely we are going to be burning cash for the retention and for the support and services rather than burning more cash for the acquisition also also just my last statement in regards to this question that mr navid put mr navid uh, do you know about the etihad credit bureau mr navid yes 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 is it mandatory to have a credit score in order to take any sort of credit in ua be it a postpaid sim card or an auto loan or a mortgage absolutely yes it's mandatory right yes am credit owns mp just giving you an idea okay great thank you for your time appreciate it perfect thank you so much next we have sonu saying who has asked the question what will be the next marketing campaign we have various marketing campaigns going on and by the way our back end allows you to curate your own marketing and also go ahead with mp so we have mp marketing uh, campaigns every month but apart from which if you as a restaurant want to curate a campaign for 5% 10% whatever it is you could still go ahead and do it but 
every month we have a campaign that's promoted and supported by MP, wherein MP takes all the charges on itself. Okay, Mr. Osman Arif, hi, uh, Osman. Uh, is the renewal debited over a course of time from the restaurant revenue or an upfront fee? Perfect. So this is what I mentioned. The renewal, I know the terms are <laughs> different because the market is used to the term renewal fees. Over here, we call it a system maintenance fee. Now, a system maintenance fee is basically in order to continue using the application at the end of the year, that's where you pay 2000 dirhams for us, right? It is not going to be charged if you do not wish to go ahead. So it is exactly like the renewal fee, but we add on a little more clarity to it. I hope that answers your question. It's, uh, it, you wouldn't be charged for the year you used it. It's only going to be if you want to keep using MPA services for the next year. And if you wouldn't, then you would not be charged. And we would only renew if you pay it. Uh, I hope that answers the question. Next question we have is Abhishek D. Hey guys, as discussed by you, it really sounds good with the commission percent, but I would like to know how you can help us to push our customers from other aggregators to your, to your platform. See, that's we do not want- <laughs> That's a yeah, yeah. He's, he's thinking I mean, that, in the right that's way. A, that's a very good dream to he's have. He's thinking in the right way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I but I, I, I want to be just and fair. We do not want to steal customers or we don't want to go grab customers from there. No, we don't want all of that. What we want to do is we want to stabilize this system. So if you feel that you're being used and abused by an aggregator or aggregators per se, just join MPay. You have a market share. They would automatically come here. And if you do that, come to me, sit down with me, see what I can do for you. I have exclusive campaigns on that. I have got things that we could plan together. Let's do that, right? I hope that answers the question. When we are a very open office, by the way. So if yeah, any we are of very open. partners- you can just walk in. Just walk in. I mean, uh, you would get the best people to meet. Yeah. Uh, anonymous attendee, having thousand plus restaurants spread around in Dubai, what's your average order per restaurant on a daily basis ever since your launch last year? Having signed up with another aggregator during this challenging time and adding another tablet, what's your current volume and conversion rate? Perfect. This is exactly what uh, the, 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 the it's in regards to what uh, the question Navid asked. Uh, yes, uh, we have thousand restaurants. We are increasing on number of orders per day. Uh, to tell you exactly what is our current volume and conversion rate would not be uh, feasible for me at this point of time. But uh, to give you an average, we are nearing about uh, Kareem uh, as per se. Yeah, we're nearing about Kareem as per se. And by the way, when our campaigns start, we go way above, we go way above that. We go way above that. On a, on a daily but, basis. But, that, but that's for that's for 500 restaurants which are live. We have 500 restaurants which are signed, but they're still going live because we have had a huge management change and we are trying to cope up with that. We are getting the restaurants live as soon as possible. We have already taken care of the big stuff that needs to be taken care of. We are in the, pro and now we're just in the process of getting all those, uh, the remaining 500 live ASAP. Okay, I think uh, that's, uh, I think the last question. Is there any other question? You can unmute yourself and go ahead and ask it. Pop on style. Anyone wants to ask a question? I guess we have stretched it too far or too long. Or probably yeah, there is one from Mr. Oh, he had to come. All right, I have go ahead and ask your question. Okay, so can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to understand how is this different from the other aggregators and what are you doing to address that? Like, uh, why wouldn't someone join other aggregators in the market? See, other aggregators, everyone would all obviously join other aggregators. All right. Uh, but what you need to understand over here is that other aggregators are literally abusing restaurants. And restaurants don't have an option, like Mr. Navid said. They don't have an option, but only because that cash flow and that kind of sales has been generated on a month-to-month -month basis is why the restaurants are with them. 
the moment the restaurants get a platform that charges them just fully i'm not i'm not telling uh, uh, i'm not i'm not saying that they need to charge them uh, super cheap or something no just fully a good commission even 15% even 15% i'm saying which is very high according to me even 15% for that matter they would shift but there is no one and having such an immense power being backed up by the government having m cash as the only cryptocurrency uh, le- accepted as a legal tender while going up front accepted on m pay itself which is is where the fnb platform is based providing instant credit to all the customers around that is what makes us different we yeah, are giving an all in all solution i believe the the amount of commission that is being charged by the others Uh, along with the uh, the delivery fees where and the registration fees is something you guys are taking care of so uh, that is incentive enough for someone to switch right 100% but i wish i wish uh, plan, i wish this is plan, understood yeah. i wish this is understood to a certain extent uh, only because those fees are very small and for us not to charge it is is not a problem because yes we are we are we are, we are dealing with a problem of market share and we like i can clearly go ahead go ahead and say that but you need to understand it's a partnership like i said even the aggregators would call you a partner as long as it's a partnership i cannot do anything without having my main core which are the partners customers would come but they would only come if i have the partners and i have the coverage i hope that answers this question yeah perfect thanks guys if you don't know ahad works in talabat he's my brother he works in talabat and we have a huge fight so yeah having that said uh anyone else you want to raise your hands uh there's one more question from the anonymous attendee uh i believe again one question to finalize how are you going to change this market which is discount oriented customer segment do you believe that the segment has been spoiled and there is no no going back to a time where customers valued quality over food over the food quality of the food over discounts do you think the aggregator can change this or are we going to live in this end this is one of the best questions that have been asked i love this thank you so much for asking this question whoever it is you shouldn't have been on anonymous i would have actually given you uh, some vouchers for mp <laughs> all right having that said what we need to understand today very very briefly okay this is this uh, i think this is the best answer to uh, you know end this entire uh, seminar okay discounts are not to be ought to increase sales discounts are a provision to show your respect to the customer you can provide a discount when you are when you have a festive season season you can provide a discount to celebrate something you can provide discounts to make the customer happy but you do not provide discounts to increase your revenue because the moment you do that what are you playing with you're playing with your food you're playing with your quality unfortunately today what has happened is we see a rise in virtual brands now to give you an idea of what virtual brands are virtual brands are those brands that do not exist physically but they exist on the aggregator place so you might have a restaurant called x all right so we have a restaurant called x here all right now this is physical you can go you can eat you can order from there or it can be just a kitchen so this is called restaurant x what we are doing is as an aggregator say for example any aggregator for that care the aggregate platform is on the internet so on the internet this restaurant x can create as many brands it wants so it can create a restaurant a b c d e f g h i so you have 10 restaurants on the aggregator platform because it's on the internet which is virtual these are called virtual brands while in this restaurant and all belong to this restaurant and they're cooked in the same kitchen so 
Now, because all of these brands are new and there is no price check, how do these restaurants give discounts? This is a burger joint. It has 10 other burger joints, which are virtual. This restaurant, because these restaurants are new, this restaurant can place any price over there. His original price might be 10 dirhams for a burger. But when you're looking at these 10 restaurants, these burgers, the same burger that he's selling over here, just by branding it or calling it by a different name, he could sell it for 60 dirhams. His cost is still how much? 28%, right? That's, that's the average that we take all around the world, but whatever. The cost of raw material would be 28% is what I say in, in layman terms. So 28% of 10 dirhams is how much? Let's take 30%, three dirhams, right? For him to give a discount on 10 dirhams would not be possible. So he'll never give a discount over here, but he would definitely give a discount on the virtual brands because the three dirham, that product that he's producing for three dirhams, he's selling at 60. So he can go up and give a 50% discount wherein he's still doing 300 to 400% of profit. I hope that answers your question. And that's how they're maintaining food quality over this, but it's spoiled the market. The customer has been fooled, has been duped altogether. What I would just add to what Mr. Fahad said is, uh, there are two very different terms. One is visibility and one is the discounts. These two have adjoined themselves in forces to help out each other, which shouldn't be the case, especially in UAE, which is such a competitive market. So many so visibility and, and is now bagged by the restaurants where they ask you to put out discounts for visibility. So basically, the more discounts you put, the more you, your brand goes up. Now, what one needs to imagine is, uh, or probably picturize is, I'm, I'm just going to keep it very short. The maximum anybody uses a device to order food online is a phone. A mobile yeah. phone is a maximum seven to eight inches of wide screen where you cannot go horizontally swiping. You can only go vertically. Once you enter an application, same as MPay or any other X aggregator or anybody, you're just going to see 10 brands in one swipe. Now, if you let's say go in business way, there are probably 895 restaurants open, but physically there are only 305 or probably 400 restaurants in business way. Where are those 500 brands? Not 500,000 today. Yeah, I mean, there are more. I mean, if you look at the virtual count on different platforms, it's it's more than a thousand on each. If you're just looking at it in that way, so and they can play the, with whatever price they want. Yeah. And, and, and the and, aggregator will charge for the visibility exactly. and will charge for the campaign. Both the visibility, the and discount, the and the virtual brand is paid by who? It's paid by the restaurant. So exactly, I mean, he, he, he sums it up very well. I mean, I'm sure if people hear this webinar probably on the later stage as well, uh, what we need to understand here why this whole agenda and webinar was constructed was we are, we are in a cage right now where the different other aggregators are our international players in the market right now. There is nobody who's from the local market except Noon, which is there, which is still trying to establish itself because, yes, they will do it eventually because of the customer and the audience they have. The second is probably Smiles, which is there to out have a piece, you know, a, a piece of the cake as but well. They don't have backing. They don't have backing like we do. Backed by Etislav. So what I mean is no matter it's Noon, no matter it's Smiles, no matter it's Empe. Doesn't matter. We, what we are facing right now in the UAE market as UAE residents is these international aggregators are come, have come up in the last three years, three years before nobody knew Talabat and Karama, Bardubai, Sharjah, international city, nobody knew Talabat then. Today, nobody knows MPE, but they want to talk about Talabat and Zomato and Delibu. So They want to give the, the likes of it. Yeah, the, the moments keep changing. There was a time when the pitch of Zomato was when the pitch of Talabat initiated with the term Zomato. Do you know Zomato, how it works? Yeah. So eventually in, in the due course of time over, over a few years or probably over a few months, how Mr. Fahad and Mr. Gigi are planning to run this you know, whole uh, agenda and initiative with the backing of the government, probably it's not going to take a year, it's going to take months or probably days where we are trying to streamline everything. And what we are trying to promote here for the restaurants is you need home support. You need the support of the government to come over 
all of these international aggregators in the market right now and say enough is enough. We know how, what, what do you suggest? There were restaurants back in 2016 and 17 who had their own drivers and who got the logistics done for every order that they got on their phones. What are you saying in these last two years that the drivers have gone or the bikes have gone? No, the bikes that went out of the restaurants were, were, were taken by third party logistical services for Talabad, Zamat and Dilibu. The bike riders are still there. I mean, your bike riders from a restaurant can stack up orders, but a Talabad guy cannot come and stack up orders. And he's going to be paying, uh, the customer ends up paying 25%, 25%, the partner ends up paying 25% for each order. So basically, uh, the scenario hasn't changed much, except the fact that the whole model of food has shifted from a dine-in to a delivery, where delivery is 80% now. Except that the operational side of it, the logistical side of it, the, the commercial side of it doesn't change. You People were buying the same quality chicken before the pandemic and even after the pandemic. It hasn't come down in any way. So every everything in this whole aesthetic is the same, except that the dine-in and the delivery model have just shifted places. And one is now at 80% and the other is at 20%. Except, except this, everything else is just being too much exploited by these international players. It's not a fuss. It's not. It's not a very difficult job to run a restaurant or the operations, or uh, get your orders online or have a reach out. We give you the whole customer detail. Nobody does that. Nobody in That's the yours. apart from adding new branch or a brand when you need to sign a contract. Apart from that, anything that you want to change online on the front end is what you have access to. On and, you get, and you get the whole, the whole details for the customer. I mean, uh, we do not we do not discourage any kind of marketing done by your uh, from your own end towards the customer. Tell me one aggregator who does that. Nobody does that in today's time. They all want to keep their customers and their acquisition towards themselves. They want to hide the information. And the, reason, and the reason why they don't do that is because they know they have to create a monop monopoly. How many, how many people will end up paying 10 dirhams or 11 dirhams for a delivery fees? If I budget my food, I'm not going to be paying 11 dirhams three, day, three times a day. Exactly. So uh, things have just been blown out of proportion. The industry, the FNB industry was never so much exploited. The pandemic did worse to all of us in every terms and in every life of society. In every and most over to the society. restaurants. Wait, most wait, wait. wait. I, have, I, have, I have the best dialogue here, Tanzil. I'm so sorry to cut you off. The pandemic did not do as much damage as the aggregators did to the exactly. restaurant industry. They exploited you. They took charge of the whole money-making situation. They came up with monopolistic models where you had to sign a logistical model. You couldn't do your own deliveries. You weren't getting any customer data. You weren't getting any support from the logistics. Uh, your restaurants might just go on and off by their own means. Uh, you had no control over the presentation. In the end, you ended up paying 35% plus discounts, plus this, plus that. I mean, in the end, people were just happy that the restaurant is opening and they're able to probably just, you know, do their daily errands on it. That shouldn't be the case. Uh, uh, it's a vertical. Food is something which needs passion. And uh, I mean, uh, we are all here working towards, uh, you know, the same goal within the vision and the idea and the capacity of the government. Does and, everyone have... Uh, the access to the chat box, uh, Leo, right. is Leo here? No, I guess he isn't. Okay, sales at mpay.ae. All right, anyone wants to sign up, has any question of any sort? Sure. Wants to do anything, please send an email directly to this email. I've just sent it on the chat uh, to all the panelists, but I need, to all panelists and attendees. One second, I'm just going to copy paste quickly. There you go. So I have sent you, you would have received this in your chat. There is an email there. It's called sales at mpay.ae. Please send in any sorts of queries. If you want to sign up, please send in your uh, query over there. Our sales teams will get in touch with you ASAP. Uh, if Having you want that to said, if you want to have meetings, I'm sorry, if you want to have meetings or you want an emperor representative 
just contact us if you want to come down to our offices uh, it's 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 in the dd building itself uh, yeah. i mean uh, just to make it more legitimate and uh, 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 what i would suggest if these panelists from torid were also here that definitely would be looking out for more such initiatives on their end and uh, thank you torid for giving us this opportunity and thank platform. you torid thank you so much it's it means a lot and, i think uh, we have another question come up yeah again a suggestion try making the delivery charges free for the customers where you bear certain charge along with the restaurant as partners uh, take care as marketing campaign good luck we already have that uh, uh, to this anonymous uh, question that just came in uh, note whenever we do a campaign delivery fee is already waived it's taken care of by us so it's not taken care by the partner it's not taken care by the customer it's taken care by us we take care of the delivery fee plus we take care of the entire campaign cost so please and know that sorted what and mr like, fahad means here by us is we do this but the government wants this this is the yes. government trying to help out the fnb industry which is the but this is for mp campaigns only guys yes. please note only yes. for mp campaigns not for campaigns that you guys launch from the back end so you have two types of campaigns one that you could create and curate on your own from the back end that we give you that is on you because it's created by you but every month we have an mp campaign which you can take part in and you would have account managers they'd get in touch with you and they'd inform you about it so if you want to take part in it what you got to do is just say yes and then uh that's where uh, the support of mp comes within the campaign and that's where the delivery fee is taken off perfect mr fahad thank you so much for your presence uh, i believe uh, we should it's been almost uh, an hour and 45 minutes of us just talking about mp uh let's uh, let's bring this to an end uh we thank torid for the support and definitely we will be looking out for them in the market as well um those guys have an amazing concept of you know keeping uh uh a trading application with them i mean i i'm really impressed by the whole idea of it and we will definitely be looking out for more such webinars feedback suggestion meetings uh with the uae restaurant community and i believe if we can get these word outs and this probably webinar video you know circulated as much as possible uh, we will bring in a change the government has never stepped in into the food and beverages industry uh, rather than you know just issuing trade licenses and you know the vat and everything they had never stepped it into into within the depth of the market where they were trying to see what's wrong and why is it happening so finally they have stepped uh, in it uh with the mp as a forefront of it and uh, we will be doing everything in our capacity to keep the vision of his highness uh, alive and very much uh, you know out there in the market on the streets uh, feel free to come and get in touch with us anytime uh, the address is uh, dd business village tower b and uh, yeah that's a temporary office right now but uh, it's actually uh ifc uh, block a no you uh, for for, for uh, mp uh, for mp yeah. it is uh, 207 second floor block a dubai economic department for m credit it is uh, uh, 304 third floor uh, difc gate building number 5 so we have two offices for m, m credit it's that one and for mp it's this one all right uh, we, we would love to have you uh, probably have chats with you feedbacks and everything you will definitely see our representatives coming uh, out to your you know places to your properties uh, and uh, we will definitely try and help you out and support you in the best of the ways uh, i guess this is done from our end uh, martin and i guess luda are not here leo i think we here. would just close it thank yeah, you so much just... for everyone the you. attendees that have come it means a lot i know uh, these are hard times uh, let's give back in whatever way we can let's support each other and let's just uh, be there for all of us thank you so much uh, have a splendid uh, year ahead and stay safe please stay thank safe you. thank you mr thank you. thank you leo thank you everybody thank you tanzil bye. thank you leo and thank you taurid thank you taurid all right bye bye stay bye, safe everybody assalam alaikum